What's up guys? My name is Brenner. This is my channel, Mr. Liquor Sipper, and my little dog too named Tyson. And I'm guessing that you guys were already guessing that today we're going to be going over, guess what? Clyde Mays. Since I got that little three pack, we got Clyde Mays, Clyde Mays uh, straight rye whiskey versus last time we had Clyde Mays straight bourbon whiskey. So if you guys have not seen that one, go back and look at the last review, but stay tuned and find out is this going to be a stink or a drink? All right guys, so as always, first things first, if you haven't already, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and turn on the bell notification so you know every single time I post something new on my channel here, Mr. Liquor Sipper. Um, like I said, today we're gonna be going over Clyde Mays. Um, we're gonna find out a little bit more about the history and uh, background of this as my dog licks the table <laughs> I don't know what he's doing um, anyway so uh, just the classification obviously we're going over a rye whiskey so this right here is in in classification it is a straight rye whiskey it is also made or uh, distilled by a company um, or comes from a company rather uh, which I cannot actually describe this or say it correctly, so I'm sure there's folks out there that can actually say this, but it's something like Konku Brands or Kun Kunaku Kunku Kunku River uh, Distillery is what it says. However, I think that that's funny because it, though it says that on the bottle, um, there's other sources that actually say it's um, distilled from an undisclosed distillery in Indiana. Um, it's kind of like a little secret FBI, private eye stuff going on here. It's a 94 proof at a 47% uh, by alcohol, or of alcohol, 47% alcohol. Um, I can't talk today. And we also have a mash bill here. The mash bill is very in-depth and actually so in-depth that that is also been undisclosed, which is very interesting. So that personally for me freaks me out because I don't know what I'm getting into here. I think after you start uh, sipping and, and, and drinking on different bourbons, you start to understand what, what mash bills that you're partial to. Now that being said, ryes are predominantly uh, one of two things. They're either, either the sweeter or they are the more um, peppery or spice typed uh, whiskey so what what am I getting myself into here I don't know it could be either or or who knows it could be a stink and not a drink at all um, these are actually aged three years and the approximate MSRP obviously once again like I said in my last uh, my last review not this bottle in particular because I bought this as a set um, of three this the normal typical bottle you would buy would be about 45 bucks so, um, a little history about Clyde Mays. Clyde Mays was actually a uh, uh, known farmer in Alabama. Um, in his, it, it, he was a talented moonshiner, actually, and it was around the mid 20th century or so. Where he was known for refining his craft in, in the years of, uh, I guess, like the Prohibition era and such. Um, he, he liked to use overdried apples. And that would be something he would actually add to his barrels uh, during the aging process. And that would kind of give it its more distinctive flavor that you get on your palate. Um, in 2001, uh, May's son uh, recreated his father's recipe and then legally began distilling Clyde May's once again. So uh, I guess it was gone for a while from my understanding and then he brought it back. Kind of like Justin Timberlake. He brought sexy back. I'm bringing Clyde Mays back. Dan, Dan, and the mother boys don't know how to drink. And we're gonna go ahead and do a little, uh, a little taste test here. So straight off the top, as you guys already know, if you are familiar with the channel, I do not do anything on this channel that I have never drank before. So everything that you see and hear is legitimate Swahili uh, is legitimately right now in the moment 
how I feel, how I smell it, how I taste it, you guys get to see. So, without further ado, let's do we do. Let me hold this little guy right here. And so you guys can hear that that is a brand new bottle pop. Alright, um, so here we go with a little little pour here. Urination break. You guys uh, think you can pass a piss test? Alright, let's see. Let's see. What do we what do we have here? Alright, what do we have here? Let's put this bad boy up for display so everyone knows that we're drinking Clyde Maze. I just just made that up potentially something wrong with me. And more than likely, the true 100% real reason you guys actually like to watch this channel. It's time for Nosing, Nosing for, for Newbies! Or doggies. Smell it, smell it, can you smell it? Look guys, he's gonna, he's gonna do a nosing for newbies. Come here buddy, we're gonna do a, no, we're gonna do a nosing for newbies. No? No, okay, yeah, he, so apparently Tyson's not a fan of, of that. So let's go straight to the nostrils and into the brain and try to explain what I can smell here. Wait, one more time. Nosing for newbies! All right, come here, bud. So right now, this smells like a forgotten closet of your grandparents' house and Kinda smells moth bally. Moth ballish sort of. Um also get some strong elements of a terrible lawsuit that's going on right now, starring Alec Baldwin's guilt. Ooh, and there's some also a subtle sense of your local Karen, possibly your neighbor, with some slight ending elements and it kind of rhymes with your local Karen it's oh let's go Brandon um, no wait let's drink bourbon uh, yeah enough with the schmuck act it's time for the real nose here so at the top of the piece I actually get for me, actually, it almost hit me straight immediately. There's the uh, apple-ish, but it almost like lime or maybe some lemon at the top. I smell a little bit of citrus with a slight sweet vanilla. And you also have um, a little bit of honeydew. Um, it smells quite youthful. Uh, remember, it's it's aged three years, so it, and actually, it's kind of weird how you, you know, as you go on through this process of learning about bourbon and whiskey, you do, you can kind of smell that it is lighter, if you will, um, which it is. If you if you can get a good look there, it's a little bit a little bit lighter. All right, now this is your world. You can drink however you want in it, fellow Bob Ross. Um, Huh. Okay, so if you go back and you remember, and if you don't because you're drunk, you can rewind a little bit and see that I said typically you get one of two things, um, either the sweeter or the spicier when you're getting into your rise. Um, that's from my personal experience. So I can't speak for anybody else, but for you guys that maybe experience something different or if you guys agree, comment uh, down in the comment section. I I'd like to, to see if either I'm fabricating these thoughts um, after they hit my tongue or that sounds like something she said or um, maybe this is legitimate and this is everything I'm saying is actually true. So, but right off the top, um, I actually get an equal amount of both with this and um, it's pleasantly surprising. I'm actually shocked by it. Um, there's a little bit of charred oak in this, and I get I get the sweet green apple taste uh, that was actually um, discussed earlier about Clyde Mays himself as he would finish this. Um, so, wow, that's crazy. I do taste that little bit of apple in there. It's actually um, kind of refreshing. It reminds me of uh, maybe like a 
apple cider, but not with vinegar, like an apple cider. It kind of reminds me of a weird apple cider. Um, it's, it's actually really good. It's refreshing. Like this is, so I wouldn't say that this is something that I would drink necessarily for, uh, for the winter time right now, but potentially like this could go really good with a warm apple pie. Like for all the guys that are out there right now that are around the age of uh, maybe 33 to 35 years old, you guys probably all grew up, maybe even 30, I don't know, but uh, grew up watching American Pie, so. It's like warm apple pie. And it really fucking is. Excuse my language. Excuse my French. Excuse my English. But um, to me, uh, it's to me, Personally, and I read reviews about this, some people said this was unbalanced, and I actually like it because it com it comes along with the sweet. See, so it, it's like if ever you have uh, uh, French fries, you know, there's, believe it or not, they put salt on the French fries. So there's a little bit of salt, they also put sugar on the French fries, so I feel like I'm getting uh, the best of both worlds here. It's a nice blend, and I personally like it. It has some toasted brown sugar elements, and then you got some, uh, some of the things, like I said, like right off the top that I smelt that I don't like generically taste immediately. And so now I'm tasting at the at the near end is where I'm getting more of the vanilla. Um, and then the spicy notes are more towards the end, whereas the sweeter are towards the top or the beginning. As far as if this is a stink or a drink, I can tell you right now that this uh, Clyde Mays well, Clyde Mays was a great gentleman. Um, very happy that this man created this and this straight white rye whiskey. Why? Straight rye whiskey. Why rye whiskey? Dude, this stuff is good. 45 bucks for a full bottle of this. Um, I may actually go out and get it. And, and I'm finding more and more, and you guys will find out too, um, the more you drink, which ones you're becoming more partial to. Partial to. Do you like the, the straight bourbon regular stuff? Which I do, but sometimes um, some crazy stuff happens and a nice little ride will pop up. After all that, all the jokes, all the fun, all the sipping, and the information, I hope you guys got something out of this. And if you did, once again, sip on that, uh, that good old subst, wait, what's it called again? And so now that we are at the conclusion of this beautiful, epic, tasting that we just had don't forget to uh, go ahead and line your glass with just a little bit of ice and uh, sip on that uh, subscription because I need you guys to subscribe hit that notification bell and hit that thumbs up sign symbol thumb emoticon thing and uh, I will see you guys next time until next time cheers and keep on sipping